All right, guys, next one, uh, three-phase RLC circuits. So right now we're getting a little bit crazy. We got a resistive load here as a Y. We got an inductive load as a Y as well. So as soon as we have different animals in the circuit, uh, being a resistive circuit and an inductive circuit, then we're going to have to make use of Pythagoras because uh, the currents aren't going to happen at the same time. So when you f we find the line currents for each of these guys, we can't just add them up similar to we did in example one, example two, example three. Uh, each of those guys were just resistive loads and we just added up the line currents. This is a resistive load, so maybe this is a three-phase resistive heater. This is a maybe a three-phase motor, Y connected, right? And maybe they're part and parcel of the exact same unit, right? The heater and the blower fan. We need to know the entire current that that unit is going to draw. So first thing we need to look at is what's the voltage that's coming in? Well, we've got uh, 600 volts, three-phase coming in meaning that we have 600 volts from any line to line. So line one to line two, 600 volts. Line one to three, 600 volts. And line two to line three, 600 volts. Those voltages are coming in here, here, and here, right? So that's the line voltage for that resistive Y load. This guy is connected in parallel with those bad boys. So the, that inductive load is now connected up to 600 volts as well. So we've been putting in all our steps here. First step here is to put in our 600 volts for our line voltage right across. Okay, those are Y connected circuits. So the phase voltage is going to be root three less. So here we have 600 volts. That's our line voltage, but we want to know what this voltage is from here to here, from any line to that center tap. Okay, there is no neutral required right here. Is there a neutral current needed? Well, each of these are balanced. So when we see this 25 ohms, the 42 ohms, that means that all of these guys are at 42 ohms, they're balanced. Each of these are at 25 ohms. Is there a neutral current? No, there's no unbalanced load. Okay, so now we've got the 600 volts and we need to find our phase voltage. Well, in order to find that phase voltage, we're gonna take the 600 volts divided by root three. And that gives us um, something very close to 347 volts. Now, trade voltage, you know, standard voltage is going to be 347. If you take the 600 and you divide it by root 3, the full root 3, you're going to get 346.41 volts. Okay, but we're going to round that up to 347 volts. Okay, standard voltages are 347. They're both Y circuits, so both of the phase voltages are going to be 347. Okay, as we said before, the next step is to take this three phase circuit and drop it into an Ohm's law equation. So here we've got 347 volts impressed across 25 ohms, right? Each of these resistors are 25 ohms. So 300, 347 volts divide, divided by 25, and that gives you 13.88 amps. Okay, again here, in order to find our phase current, we're going to take our phase voltage of 347 volts divided by 42 ohms. That's the resistance that we have on the phase. 347 divided by 42 gives you 8.26 amps. Okay, if we're keeping track of our currents, the current inside of this circuit is 13.88 amps. And the current on the inside of this guy is 8.26 amps. Now again, we're going to think of the Y circuit as a series circuit. If you're looking here, there's only one path for the current to flow, right? So we're going to think of the Y as a series circuit. And that means that the line current and the line and the phase current are exactly the same. So 
This is also 13.88 amps. Okay, I line is equal to I phase. It's our fourth step. Okay, so again, if you're keeping track here, and it helps to put in all of your values as you go, then you don't get lost. This value is also going to be easy now. Hang on. 8.26 amps. Okay, so again, I line is equal to I phase. Okay, and now we have both of our line currents. Now, <clears throat> this value at 13.88 amps for the resistive load, and this value at 8.26 amps for the inductive load, they do not happen at the same time. Now, with this one, we're trying to simplify this. We're not talking about any resistance within the circuit whatsoever. So the resistance of the actual conductors of the coils is negligible. So what we're going to say is that this resistive load and this inductive load are 90 degrees out of phase. So I'm not sure who, which higher power came up with this, um, but a right angle triangle can basically summarize everything in electrical theory. So we're going to find some room to put this in. Let's put it right here. Our resistive current is 13.88 or resistive current. Okay, Inductive current goes on the opposite. I'm going to put an L to denote that it's the inductive current. Okay, This value right here, anything on this part of the chart is the opposite. Anything on this part of the chart is the adjacent of a right angle triangle. Okay, so adjacent, opposite, let's just draw those guys in, adjacent value, opposite, what is messed is that those two currents are 90 degrees out of phase, and so we need to find the hypotenuse, the total circuit current. And we're gonna look at the line values now. So we got 13.88, we got 8.26, they are 90 degrees out of phase, so we were going to use Pythagorean's theorem in order to find our total current. 13.88 squared plus 8.26 squared. Okay, so Pythagorean's theorem is that the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared, and we got to take the screwed of those bad boys, is going to give us our hypotenuse. Okay? So that gives you a total line current of 16.15 amps. So here we've got 16.15 amps, 16.15 amps, 16.15 amps. How come those are all the same? These are balanced loads. Exact same current on each of the lines. Exact same current on each of the lines. Those currents are 90 degrees out of phase. We're using Pythagorean's theorem, adjacent squared plus opposite squared to give us a, a hypotenuse of 16.15. Line 1, line 2, line 3 are balanced at 16.15 amps. Okay, last thing we need to do uh, in order to find the, uh, the VA, the wattage, and the VARs, any of those equations like here for the VA, this is V line times I line times root 3. Okay, this one here is V line times I line, so V line times I line times root 3. This one here is V line times I line times root 3 to give us our VARs. Okay, here I found, uh, let's see, let's punch this in. We've got 600 as our line voltage. We've got 16.15 as our line current, and we're going to multiply that by the full root 3, and that gives me 16,783. And to be precise, we got to 0.57. That's in VA. Okay? If we're looking at the next one, we have 600 volts as the line voltage. Uh, line current is 13.88 amps. And we're going to multiply that by root 3. That gives you 14,424. And decimal, we got 5.2. Okay, that is in watts. Anything in that column is in wattage. Okay, because that's the resistive load. Finally, we have 600 volts times line current of 
So we're going to multiply that by root 3. Gives us 8,000. What do we got? 584.04. Now the units for that is vars. And because it's an inductor, we're going to put that subscript L there. Okay? So uh, what do we got? 1, 2, 3, 4, right? This was step 5 here for our total line current. Then we found all of our power values right across. Okay. Now, if you wanted to double check your values here, this value for the, the resistive load, 14,424, if you square that, plus 8,584 squared, take the square root, you will get a value that's very close to 16,783 VA. All right, guys, last thing we need to do is to find the power factor, which is the watts over the VA, All right? So in this case, we got 14,424.52 uh, watts. Our VA is 16,783.57 VA. Okay, so we're getting, we're looking at our true power versus our apparent power. True power being the wattage at 14,424.52. Uh, We're going to divide that by our apparent power of 16,783.57. And that gives us uh, a power factor of 0.859. And we're going to round that guy up to 0.86. Okay, that is telling us that this circuit is 86% efficient. Right? For the 16,783 VA that we purchased, we're getting 14,424 watts of true power, and then we're using 8,584 VARs in order to create the magnetic fields on that motor. All right, excellent. Thanks, guys. Uh, click in for the next uh, the video. The next example will be obviously example number five.